All right, so now we're on to 7.3 lesson. We're now going to move from similar polygons to similar triangles. The warm-up here will um, deal with looking at, uh, to figure out whether these are similar or not, and the scale factor, this will pertain to your 7.2 lesson. This is the warm-up that you'll try on your own and we'll go over in class. So when we start talking about our similar triangles, just like with our congruent triangles, we had different, um, we had different theorems that we could say that they're congruent using side, 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 stuff like that. Well, here, now we're talking about similarity. So we need to remember that these are going to be the same shape, but they are not going to be the same size anymore. The first one we're going to talk about is your angle, angle similarity postulate. Again, going with your similarity right here, not congruent. This is going to state that if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then they are going to be similar. Now, we, when we're looking at angles, again, with angles, we always talk about them being, the angles will be congruent. So with, with our congruent triangles in a previous chapter, we could not use the angles to help us. And this kind of helps you understand why. Your angles can be the exact same size, the exact same measurement, but the shape will, can be a different size. If you take on Word document and you paste in a photo and you can go and you could drop, take that bottom corner and you can go proportionally make it bigger, the angles will stay the same. That's why if you have scale factors, of, let's say the pyramids, the angles of the pyramids in Egypt, the angles will, should still be the exact same measurement, but clearly a model of the pyramids is going to be a lot smaller. But your angles will always stay congruent. So in this example here, we have that angle A and angle F are congruent. So we have an angle. And then we have here the angle B and angle G are congruent, which would give us our second angle. And based on our third angle theorem, our third angles will automatically be congruent. Okay? So this is your angle-angle similarity. All you need are two angles that are congruent. Your third angle is automatically congruent, and you have similar triangles. Then you have your side-side-side similarity, again, with that word similarity, not congruent. Now with your sides, what's going to end up happening is your corresponding side lengths. This will have to be all three sides of two triangles are proportional. Now this is where we have to go back into this whole sides of similar triangles are going to be proportional, not congruent on similar triangles. That's the difference between side-side-side congruence and side-side-side similarity. With your similarity, they'll be the same shape, but they're going to be different sizes. And then we have different ratios here stating that our ratios are proportional here. We have a side, we have a side, and we have a side. Again, we'll look at all of this in examples. The last similarity that we have is your side angle side. So this one we also only have three with your similarity. This is going to state that if you have two sides of one triangle, again, we're dealing with that word, are proportional to the, uh, to the side lengths of two corresponding sides of the second triangle. And you also have to have that included angle. The included angles have to be congruent. Okay, so we're going again with that included angle, the angle in between the two sides. So the A is between the two S's. In this case, if we have two sides in an angle, there's only one order they can go in. So this makes it a little bit easier than the congruence where we had different orders we had to pay attention to. Okay, and here in our ratio, we're told that, that the length of RS right here is congruent to the length of XY, and then the length of ST right here is congruent to the length of YZ. So we have another side, and then we're told that angle S and angle Y are congruent. Sorry, the sides are proportional. Um, so then we've got our angle here, so we have a side, angle, side, all three in a row, okay? And then we go back to our reflexive property, our symmetric property, and our transitive property, doing the exact same thing we've always seen, but now we have a similar symbol in between them, okay? So that's the big difference. We've seen congruent, we've seen equal, but these are the exact same, it's just now we have that similar symbol, okay? Reflexive, same thing on both sides. Symmetric, the two are going to switch. And then with your transitive property, you're going to cross out that middleman and bring the two outers together. So the first example that we will go over here is going to be determining if they're similar and if so, how.
one of these three similarity theorems or postulates that we talked about, angle, angle, side, 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 or side, angle, side. Well, the first thing that I see here is I see that I've got two triangles, okay? Got the smaller triangle up top, and we've got a bit bigger triangle down bottom. So I notice that all three, or all three sides of both triangles are labeled. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna test out the side, side, side similarity theorem. And how we're going to do, how we're gonna go about doing this is we're going to compare the ratios. So how do we figure out which sides correspond when we're not given those names? Well, you go based on the sides, or the, the side lengths. So if we look at the top triangle here, I see that I got five, six, and eight. So we're gonna go ahead and match up my small side. So here, segment QR will correspond with, we go to the bottom triangle here, and we see that RS, sorry, RT is the smallest side. So that means for our small side, let's find its ratio. We have five over 12.5. And then we can go ahead and we'll, if we plug that into the calculator, because we don't want decimals and fractions, we will actually find out this will be 0 0.4. Okay, so this will be the ratio of, this, of the two small sides. Then we're going to move to the medium side, or the middle side, whichever way you would like to call that. The top triangle, I see that segment PQ is going to be the middle number, or the medium number. And down here at the bottom triangle, TS is going to be the middle number. So when we take a look at the ratio here to see if it's the same, the first ratio up here at the small sides, I put the smaller triangle on top and the bigger triangle on bottom, just how the picture shows, so we need to stay consistent. So I'm going to put the 6 on top and I'm going to put the 15 on bottom. When we simplify this, since the first one we turn into a decimal, we'll go ahead and turn this into a decimal, we are going to find out that this is going to be 0 0.4 as well. We always have to check the third side. Always, always, always. Never skip that last side. You, if you want side, 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 we have to check all three of them. So the last one here are large sides. We are going to have side PR to side RS. So here I'll have the 8 on top, and I'll have the 20 on bottom. And we simplify this, we're going to come out to 0 0.4 as well. So what we can do here is we can go ahead and conclude that all three corresponding sides have the same ratio, sorry for the sloppy handwriting, trying to make the video as short as possible, have the same ratio, therefore we can conclude that triangle RPQ, top triangle up here, is similar to triangle R. S T by side 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 similarity. Okay. With this one, you can also see that we have vertical angles here. And vertical angles we know are going to be congruent. So we could also end up with side angle side if we didn't want to use these three sides. If we didn't want to use that third side here. The next problem. Um, we are going to take a look at, you're going to do most of this on your own, but I'm going to help you out with guiding you to where, uh, to what steps to take. What we see here is that, clear it up a little bit, I've got angle L and angle M are congruent, and that's all I see here, other than they're, that are congruent, but what I need you guys to notice is we have a missing angle. So we need to figure out, we cannot right now, there are no side labels, so we cannot go side angle side or side side side. We can only use the angles. We have to determine if angle K is congruent to angle P or if angle J is congruent to angle Q. So we have to figure out one of these two angles. So we can use our triangle sum theorem on this. And we only need to find one of them. And if we find out that, let's say, angle K is congruent to angle P, then we have our angle angle. So what we can do to do that, we can say, okay, the measure of angle L plus the measure of angle J plus the measure of angle K, focusing just on this first triangle, is equal to 180 degrees. So what you're going to do on your own is you're going to substitute in. You're going to figure out what measurement angle K is. And if it is congruent to angle P, if it comes up to 75 degrees, then we do have similar triangles based on the angle angle. And we'll go over that in class. The third one, you're going to do quite a bit on your own as well, but I am going to guide you through 
um, how to work this triangle out because it can look a little confusing. We do have a small triangle inside of a larger triangle. So what I want you guys to see here is triangle A, E, F first, okay? And I'm gonna draw that over here to the side. I have angle A, E, F, where A, E is eight and A, F is 10. My E, F is unknown, okay? We're not gonna worry about that right now. The other triangle is the larger triangle. So we have angle A, C, B. So when we draw that triangle out, just the best we can. There's angle A, C, B. We need to figure out what the side lengths are. Well, A, C is going to be this entire length, so we need to remember that we've got to add that 8 plus 4. And we've seen this before. So now when we add that 8 plus 4, we found out that A, C is 12. Same thing with side AB, we have to add that 10 plus 5, and we'll find out that the length of AB is 15. So now that we have these two sides we can compare, there's something else we're going to need here. And just like when we dealt with uh, reflexive sides of congruent triangles, you'll see it with similar triangles, not similar triangles, but with, you'll see it now with your angles. We have a shared angle up here. So when we have a little triangle inside the big triangle, we do have a shared angle, making us, giving us two congruent angles. So what we need to do now is all we have to do is figure out if side AE, the smaller of the two sides, is proportional to side AC, the smaller of the two, and if our large sides are proportional as well. So what you're going to do on your own is you're going to, just like we did on example number one, you're going to find the ratio of the small sides and you're going to find the ratio of the large sides. If they come down to be in the exact same ratio, then we will have side angle side. If they do not come to the same ratio, these triangles are not similar and you would just say they're not similar. So I want you to copy what we did on number one, putting one over the other and simplifying to figure out if the two ratios are going to be the same. Okay. The next problem we're going to look at is number four, and you're going to do some stuff on your own here as well, but again, the picture's looking a little bit different, and so I'm going to help walk you guys through this. We want to know if the triangles are similar, and if so, we want to write a similarity statement to justify our reasoning here, okay? So what we're going to need to take a look at here is going to be the fact that we have these parallel sides, okay? So with these parallel sides, we're going to go back to our different kind of angle pairs. If we take these two parallel sides, I'm going to lighter color, make it easier to see through. If we take these two parallel sides and extend them, we're going to have our transversal right here. And we don't even really have to do any work here of, you know, simplifying anything or you know, finding the third angle, seeing if the angles are congruent, because with this transversal, we automatically have corresponding angles. And with those corresponding angles, we can automatically say that, yes, these are going to be similar. And to make that more clear for you guys to see here, angle B right here and angle C are corresponding angles. So they're going to be congruent. So we automatically have our angle-angle similarity. So we can say yes, triangle ACD is similar to triangle ABE by angle-angle similarity. Now, we're going to go ahead and find segment or the length of BE together, and then you'll find AE on your own. In order to do this, we will do our proportions like we've been doing. And BE is going to be right here where X is. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go within the triangle and say, okay, 3 to X, a ratio of 3 to X is equal to the bigger triangle here. I can highlight that in another color so you guys can see a little better. We've got the bigger triangle here. 
and we're going to set that up to well three went on top that was the side right here its corresponding side is going to be this five so we'll have five to three point five and that is a three point five not a thirty five so when we do our cross multiplication now go here and say okay 5x is equal to 3 times 3.5 will give us 10.5 and so we'll just solving for x divide both sides we'll cross multiply then divide x is going to come out to 2.1 so meaning the length of BE is 2.1. So what you're going to do on the next one is this, the exact same thing, but here we're going to figure out the length of AD. Let me find another color. So we're looking for AD right here. So when we do this, we can use our we can use some of the same proportions we're using. Um, I'm going to do the three over y here. So I'm going to say three over y and look at just the small triangle here. Three over y. I know this picture can get a little sloppy. And then I'm going to do this entire length right here, which is going to be the five over. I need to do this entire length. Okay. Now remember, this entire length is a y and it's the 3. So to find that, we have to use our segment addition postulate. We have to say, okay, AE plus ED is going to equal AD. And AD is what we want to put underneath here because it corresponds with y. So there we would have the y plus 3. This will deal with some distribution. So I'll help you set up this next part, just remembering what we need to do here. We're going to have y times 5. 5y five is equal to, and now we have a 3 times the y plus 3. So we'll do our distribution. Do this on your own. We'll solve for AD, and then we will take a look at that in class. Sorry, these notes are run a little bit long. Number 5, we're going to take a look at, okay, are these triangles similar first? We need to write the similarity statement. And then we are going to figure out what the lengths of AE and DE are. Okay, and I'm going to help you guys set this up. So what we're going to use here is they're going to tell us that segment AB, so from here to here, is 4. AE, right here, is 3X plus 1. CD, over here, is going to be 8. And ED, right here, will be X plus 12. So what we will do is notice here already we have an angle measurement. We have two angles that are going to be congruent. So we need to find out if our sides are going to be proportional. So you'll go ahead and set up your ratios and using the knowledge from the previous problems, try this one on your own and we'll go over that in class. We're almost done. Promise. Now we have proportions in real life. And I actually really like these um, because whenever you set these up, we pretty much have, depending on if you draw it or not, you, you can see your proportions set up already in front of you. What I mean by that here is we take a look at this problem. Haley is estimating the height of the cyclone uh, roller coaster in Galveston, Texas. She is three feet tall, three feet, sorry, three, five feet, three inches tall, and her shadow is three feet long. If the length of the shadow of the roller coaster is 34 feet, how tall is the roller coaster? This is what we're looking for right here. Okay, so this is going to be X. Now I'm going to draw this out to the side just using, you know, basically an L shape or, you know, just kind of drawing this what we're going to, I'll show you here. I have Haley here. So here's Haley. Nice and beautiful. And here is our shadow. We are told that her height is five feet three inches luckily they already gave us the height as a decimal here so her height is 5.25 and her shadow right here as we can see and it says in here is three feet long okay then we have the roller coaster which I'm going to draw over here
and this roller coaster draws a little L shape. We're told that we don't know the height, so here's X. And then we need to, and our shadow here is 34 feet. And what I mean by I like these because they're kind of set up already in the proportion form for us is right here. Here's your fraction bar for your ratio. 5.25 over 3 is equal to X over 34. So we can just write that out over here. 5.25 over 3 equal to X over 34. And then we can go through a process of solving for x. We'll have 3x is equal to 5.25 times that 34. When we multiply 5.25 times 34, we'll get 178.5. We're going to divide both sides by that 3 that's attached to x. And we're going to find out that the height would be 59.5 feet. Okay. So the next or the last problem here, we do have to do some um, some. We have to convert feet into inches, inches back into feet. So when we look at this, we're seeing that we have a person over here. We've got a flagpole. We have a flagpole that casts a shadow of 50 feet. Okay. So right here, we're going to have 50 feet. At the same time, a woman standing nearby who is 5 feet 4 inches. So what we want to do is figure out, okay, well, how tall is she? Or how, well, we're going to put everything into inches here. So let's actually go back to this 50 feet. To figure out how many inches 50 feet is, we have to multiply it by 12 because there are 12 inches in each foot. You can also do this proportionally. But this will end up being 600. So we'll actually change this to 600. And then her height, right here, 5 inches, 4 feet, or sorry, 5 feet, 4 inches, we're going to take those 5 feet, multiply it by 12 again to figure out exactly how many inch, or inches tall the 5 feet is, and that's going to be 60. Then we need to make sure that we add on that, that extra 4 inches there. So her total height would be 64 inches. So over here, she's going to be 64 inches tall. The shadow of... Um, of the woman standing nearby is 40 inches, so that's already in inches. We want to know what is the height of the flagpole. So again, we're looking at right here, our X. So with this drawn, like we saw earlier, we've already got our ratio equal to our second ratio. So we can set this up. Now what I want you guys to notice, we want it to the nearest foot. So when you are done, what this means is you're going to have to divide the answer. You have to go the opposite direction. Instead of multiplying by 12, you're going to divide the answer by 12 to convert back to feet. You will do this on your own after we set this proportion, find out what x is, and then we will divide by 12, and we'll go over it in class tomorrow.